Hello everyone, in today's video I will show you something that I've been wanting to make a video about for a very long time and something that very little people know. How does Freddy Fazbear actually work? As some of you might know, some years ago I built this real-life Freddy animatronic, complete with all the movements we can see in the original game and also real-life proportions. Since then, tons of people have been asking about his inner mechanics and how do I make him move, speak, etc. Well, that moment is here. To explain it, I will use a model of Freddy that doesn't really have the exact same mechanisms as mine, but for demonstration purposes, it's perfect. Also, this can serve as inspiration for anyone who wants to build their own animatronic, so let's get started. With the animatronics, we can identify three main categories regarding how they move, or more specifically, what kind of actuators they have. The original Freddy is what I would call a pneumatically driven animatronic. This is because the actuators that make him move are powered by compressed air. They are the simplest kind of actuators, meaning that they have only two states, on and off. This makes the very characteristic sudden and rough animatronic movement that we are all familiar with. But the question is, how to transform this linear motion into all the movement Freddy has, like for example lifting his arm or rotating his head? This is done by the use of very clever mechanisms that harvest the power of pneumatic pistons and move the different parts of the animatronic. But before we go in depth on how these mechanisms operate, we first need to understand what a pneumatic cylinder is and how do they work. There are basically tubes that have a seal on the middle. This creates two different air cavities where air can flow in and out. Attached to the seal is a rod, which will output the motion of the seal. A solenoid valve is used to divert the air from the compressor to any side of the piston, and when one side is pressurized, the rod moves in the opposite direction, creating movement. The solenoid valve can be actuated manually by the use of a button, but in order to synchronize it with the character and synchronize it with audio and other parts of the show, the valves are actuated by a microcontroller, in my case, an Arduino Uno. There are lots of very good YouTube videos that go in way more detail on how this works, so I will leave them in the description if you are interested in them. Now, how do we turn this linear motion of Freddy into the movements that actually make him move? Let's take a look at the endoskeleton and see how it's done. In this first example, let's take a look at the very simple mechanisms that just turn linear motion into linear motion. This is the way the mouth and the eyelids are operated. As you can see, the piston is connected to the mouth with a hinge. When the piston opens and closes, so does the mouth, and it's that simple. Let's see the eyelids. They are connected to the frame using some hinges, and on the back they can have a small lever that is pushed and pulled by the piston. This same mechanism can be seen in the arm, body up, and many other mechanisms that Freddy has. Now let's see a slightly more complicated type of mechanisms that convert linear motion into rotational motion. For example, the mechanism that makes the body turn. This mechanism consists of two pancake pneumatic cylinders that are assembled in such a way that the rod of one connects to the base of the other one. That way the mechanism has three stable positions, when both are closed, when one is open and the other one is closed, and when both are open. This makes it possible for Freddy to have three stable positions to turn to his right, to the center and to the left. The whole body is sitting on a bearing, connected to the bottom lever, as you can see here. When the pistons move, they turn the body side to side. This mechanism can also be found in other parts of Freddy, slightly modified, but almost the same. And these are the two main types of mechanisms that are present in the animatronics most of the time, and when you arrange them in a clever way, you can make an animatronic do whatever you want. Now let's focus on some other curious aspects of Freddy, like for example, how do all of these interesting mechanisms do not interfere with the movement of the body parts? What I mean is that in order for these mechanisms to run smoothly, there has to be something protecting the fabric on the outside from the rough mechanisms on the inside. This is done by the body shells, we are, like the name implies, plastic or fiberglass shells that give Freddy his very characteristic shape, while protecting all of the thin and breakable fabric on the outside from the mechanisms on the inside. Without them, Freddy would not have any defined shape, and this part is something that usually amateur builders get wrong. I know it because I got it wrong one time. <laughs> Finally, all of the movements are controlled by a microcontroller. There are many different kinds of controllers, but what I like to use is a MIDI decoder board. This board takes the MIDI signals and transforms them into 12-volt pulses that can actuate the solenoid valves. 
At the beginning I used dedicated MIDI boards, but now you can find MIDI shields that plug into an Arduino and can be controlled using any standard audio software. Then it's as simple as playing a MIDI piano and each key would actuate a different movement in the animatronic. There are also a lot of videos in YouTube about it, so I'll leave some in the description. I really hope you enjoyed this explanation that started to turn into a tutorial on how to build animatronic. In the future, I would like to do an in-depth series on how to build them, with step-by-step -step instructions and material lists so that you can build your own. Until then, you can always visit my other videos to learn more about the topic, and until then, see you next time. Thank you.